Hello YouTube, this is Frunel. Now this is the building for my new storage system. And it's not the main storage of my base, but it's the storage for my industrial district, where I have most of my farms, at least the ones that do not need to be built in a specific biome or in the nether. This may not be very unusual if you think that we have impulse as wheel sorters, so the standard item sorters at the back. But what we, what we actually have are a ton of shulker box loaders. So let's very briefly have a look at the redstone behind it. And this building is fairly small on the outside because all of the relevant redstone is underneath. So all of the shulker box loaders are underneath. We just have water streams coming in from all of the farms going into this central water stream here. We have a chunk loader that keeps the system running until no new items come in. And the crucial trick that allows to do this was from a user named Agajantas on Reddit, probably butchering the name. And the idea is just to use water columns to collect the items. So here at the bottom, the shulker box loaders will put the item into a dropper and the dropper just spits out the item. And of course, items float in Minecraft and these trapdoors here make sure they stay in their row. And then they just float over here. Since they have zero reversal velocity sideways, they will also stay in their lane and add up in the correct hopper. The shulker box loaders that I use that are from Summers to Sage are not slice preserving, so it can happen and it happens like 1 out of 20 times that a shulker box is picked out by the neighboring slice. This is not a big issue for me. I use client-side tools that allow me to group the shulker boxes. And, but of course, if you want to have perfect slice preserving, then you wouldn't use shulker box loaders directly go in here, but you would load all of the items into shulker box loaders and use a box sorter here. And of course, there are plenty of designs, for example, on the storage discord. I want perfect order in my main base, but here in the industrial district, it's not that relevant. And of course, the setup here is that I have one side with the items where I really get a ton of. So I have a storage of five double chests for the shulker boxes. And on the other side, I have the items where I don't have so many, like the colored wool or the wood. So here I've just put two of the elevators on top of each other and shulker box loaders on either side. And my first idea was to achieve this using drop operators. And of course, drop operators, now let's say the items come in from here, from the left side in this case, it's really easy to bend them to the left side, so to the same side. But if you want to have two chests on top of each other, now these water streams are just five blocks wide. Wall, water stream, wall, water stream, wall. For the drop operators, we would need eight blocks. But also, either we have the shulker box loaders on top of each other, so we would have one shulker box loader here and another shulker box loader here, or we try to loop the drop operator to the other side. So items come in from the right here and we want to go to the left, but that's rather space intensive. That's a really, really neat and easy solution that I really like. And now that this new building is constructed, I can finally get rid all of the ugly and rather temporary shulker box loaders that I've built. Here's another one where I used to sort all of the items. Now, of course, there's an overflow. So basically all of the items that pass the system will go into this shulker box loader here. The shulker boxes will arrive here at this side. And if I accidentally drop the tool in there, I can kind of request the shulker box, which will break the current shulker box and bring it up here after a couple of seconds. There we go. So these are the items. Oh dear, a few hopper minecarts that ended in there. And on the other side, I have also an input. So these are the items that can be sorted by my system. So I can throw in shulker boxes and I could also throw in single items and they are put back into circulation. Now, one thing that you may wonder about is why I use single speed shulker box loaders. And there's a simple reason. Double speed shulker box loaders suck. Let me show you why. Maybe you think the double speed filters and double speed shulker box loaders would be better. But for a storage system like this, they are not. This is your basic double speed item filter. At the back, it just looks like every single item filter. 
with the usual setup that allows me to pick up almost a stack. So this is this AB slice variant of the standard impulse SV filter. But this hopper goes directly down into this hopper here. And this hopper has some locked slots, so you can put in any filter items. Unstackable items are good because you can't accidentally put in an item that might end up in a storage. And this is the filter item, and this hopper here on top tries to push down the first slot into the filter below, but because it's full, it can't, and it's locked. And what happens if items come in, that as the usual sorter, this redstone torch goes off, so this hopper becomes unlocked. We also have a hopper here below, and but this hopper is also locked by the same redstone torch, so at this moment, no items can go over there by being pushed by this hopper or being sucked out by this hopper. Now what happens here, if we put in a stack of the items, then you see they go out with double speed because this hopper pushes down and also this hopper pulls. So every hopper tick, every 0.4 seconds, we get two items that are transferred down. And here this hopper pushes into this dropper here and this hopper pulls out the items and both they go into this dropper here below. And this dropper is pulsed by an observer clock at double hopper speed and fills the Schalker box. The Schalker box loader is also from Summers to Sage. So what's the issue with this setup? Now, this is the filter for white rule. This is filter for any other item. And here we put in the items at double sp hopper speed exactly using an observer clock. So you'd think that the system would be able to pick up all of these items. So let's turn this on. The items travel as they would in a normal storage. So first we align them to one side. Then we have a slap on ice. This groups them to stacks. And then they can be picked up by the filter. But oh no, some of the items go through and end up in this chest. Actually quite a lot of items. Now why is this? And there we have to go into hopper mechanics, which are quite weird. And the reason for those problems are cooldowns. Now a hopper can pick up quite a lot of items, a full stack, at once. And let's slow down the game by a factor of four. What happens that after the hopper picks up an item, it takes 0.4 seconds until it can pick up the next item. And that's also one of the reasons why you should always group items to stacks. Now if they are not formed to stacks, it will take a lot longer to pick them up. But what's less known is that once it's transferring the items down, there's also a cooldown. So you would expect now, it's been long since it picked up any items, it should pick up items immediately, but it doesn't. Sometimes the items are there quite a long time. And the reason for that is that after transferring an item, there's also a cooldown that goes to the pickup. Now let's have a look at the effect. So let's assume the items come in over these eyes here and can be picked up by these hoppers. So here we have double speed, here we have signal speed. And I have stored commands to create items right on top of these hoppers. So I will freeze the game using carpet mod. I will not use the command blocks because it takes a while until the command registers. So we summon 20 items over each hopper. Now these items are low enough to be picked up by the hopper. So if we advance one tick, both hoppers have picked up the items and already one item was sucked out by the hopper below. Now this hopper does not yet transfer because it's still in cooldown. And of course both hoppers are now in an 8 tick cooldown, so they can't pick up any new items. So let's summon more items. Then I will have to wait 8 ticks until they can pick up anything. So if I use for example tick step 6, you see the items just land on the hopper, they can't pick anything. One more. Still in cooldown, and now the last tick, and now both hoppers have picked up the items. Let's advance again eight ticks. So both hoppers are now out of cooldown, and just give it, and now they are transferring, and give it one tick more, and create the items again. So for both hopper, it's been nine ticks since they last picked up an item. So they should be able to pick up the items immediately. But if I go one more tick, only the single speed hopper picks up the item. And the reason for that is that the double speed hopper has just transferred the item down and is it cool down again. And so it will take another six tick, I think, before the items are picked up. 
There we go. And that means if items pass by on a water stream, there's a rather high chance that this hopper would now miss the item. While this hopper could always pick up the items. Now the curious thing is that the items could come in at hopper speed, for example from a tree farm, but in these types of patterns that we get a small stack and then we get a couple more items and then we get nothing for a few seconds. And the single speed item filter will always be able to pick up these items as long as the slot is not full. Now let's make this a real normal item filter with 21 dummy items and a filter item here. So we can put in the item at quite large batches and they will all be picked up by the filter as long as we never reach 64. And this is why this AB configuration is also so great. The usual impulse filter, you would have 41 filter items here. Here you need only one and can pick up 63. Because of this slab here that groups the items to stacks, the delay between stacks is always long enough that the hopper is no longer in cooldown. So as long as the items come in at hopper speed or slower, our single speed hopper will pick up all of the items, while our double speed hopper would have trouble if the first stack was too large. The double speed hopper, if it would pick up half a stack, as long as it's still transferring, as long as it's still moving items down, the items will mostly pass. Mind boggling as it is, in this situation, a double speed hopper is worse than a single speed hopper. Now, of course, there are still applications where it makes sense to use double speed filters. For example, in a situation like this, my very fast creeper farm with about 200k gunpowder power, I would need about 25 single speed hoppers, and instead I decided to use 15 double speed hoppers, or rather in this case, five six speed shulker box loaders. But it's always a good idea to have a few filters extra. Now, in this case, the expected speed is about 22 to 24 times hopper speed, but I built 15 double speed filters just in case, because just a few items will go past. So what's the solution in my storage? First, I left a bit of room intentionally for the building. Now here I just have a few chests, but I might put in maybe some auto crafter action with 121. I could also extend the storage. I have about 15 free slots right now, but here on the sides, I just added a second filter for the outermost slice. For example, wheat comes in at double hopper speed if I use my wheat farm. And here nether warts come in at closed hopper speed, sometimes maybe a bit more, and also dark oak. So for these filters we have double hopper speed. But of course I have some room left here. What I always could do is put in shulker box loaders here that work at any speed I want and then just have a box sorter pushing out the items in my storage here. I will give you a world download with the core of the sorting system, but I think it's a quite nice build because it's fairly compact, because my, most item storages are hugely bulky because of all the shulker box loader action going on. But this one is actually pretty small and I'm quite happy with it. And here on the roof I want to create a little green area, maybe a few benches, so I can rest and watch my aquarium. But that's no longer a topic of this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. And see you next time. Bye bye.